I don't think AI is going to replace humans in Hollywood. I think that what you're seeing with AI is you're seeing an emergence of like new types of entertainment. This is Michael Lingelbach, CEO of Hydra, the company behind a lot of the talking AI characters you see online, including the talking baby podcasters. I don't want to replace actors. I want to enable people that were not creatives or not filmmakers. I don't think that Hollywood is going to be disrupted by AI. I think entertainment is only going to grow because of AI. From AI on the lot and VP Land, this is Inside the AI Studio. Cool. So, Michael, should we turn you into baby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, that's that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, first off, tell me about Hydra. Yeah, so uh, you know, uh, beyond being the baby podcast uh, generator of choice, you know, Hydra is a generative media platform and a research company. And so we build workflows around all of the latest models, including our own. That includes both image and video, and now actually audio as of a couple of days ago, synthesis into one cohesive platform where people can create everything from user generated content like the baby podcast <laughs> to professional marketing material more geared towards corporate use cases. Okay. I've also been seeing it used and talked about just for like good when you're doing like AI short films or AI generated films, like for character performances, lip sync. Was that an expected use or has that sort of been like a happy accident? I mean, I have always had like a deep passion for cinema. So it's always been kind of like maybe an off label, but really exciting use. I think, you know, for me, historically, AI video has been like very rapidly evolving. And we've really enjoyed growing with the community of AI filmmakers. And I think with the latest release of the model, what people really liked is they weren't limited to like five or eight second clips. They had a lot of flexibility. They could do long form monologues. They had more control over angles. And I think there was a certain dynamism that was, at least when we launched the model, like not really seen in video. Um, and that's definitely something that we're really excited about doubling down with our next product. How do you control the performance and how do you see that sort of evolving, uh, especially like in an AI space? Yeah, so I think for us, we think a lot about how can we actually fundamentally re-architecture these models so that are not just like clip generators. Mm -hmm. And by clip, I mean like uh, contrastive language image pre-training, like the embeddings that you would typically use for text to turn it into video. We've been thinking a lot about, can we actually make a system that can more jointly reason over things like, what's your intentionality in the scene? Like what did they do in the last scene? and even give like a personality to a character within a video that can be consistent so that it doesn't feel like I'm just generating something net new every time, but you have something that you can more deeply connect with. Like a Laura personality or something? Yeah, like a personality Laura, but ideally something that didn't require uh, adaption on pre-existing video, but could kind of be like fundamentally controlled at a low level. Like think about making someone like always afraid of water so that every time they walk by the ocean, they like move away. We really want to bring that level of like personality or deep customizability into generative video. And does that go into, you know, I'm thinking of like that reaction, does that go into also like immersive storytelling or, or um, like interactive storytelling? 100%. I think one thing that we've pioneered a lot at Hydra is being able to run models very quickly. Um, and we think that this is the year that interactive video is going to have its heyday. You've seen a lot from starting with like Descartes and did like this Minecraft demo. But I think what we really care about is can we actually make like a, an interactive, realistic feeling character that you could connect with? And I think that's exciting, not just from a creation standpoint, like imagine directing an actor in a video, like with, with language, but also from like a new forms of storytelling, like where it's not just something that's pre-recorded, but something that's dynamic that you can influence. Where do you see humans and human actors fitting into this, uh, especially with like the Gen AI kind of filmmaking space and controlling AI characters? I see them as like mostly orthogonal right now. Like I think that there's, I don't think AI is going to replace humans in Hollywood. I think that what you're seeing with AI is you're seeing an emergence of like new types of entertainment. Like you look at like NeuroViz and the Monoverse that's taking over on TikTok. We actually started on Hydra, funnily enough. And I think what I'm personally excited about is I don't want to replace actors. I want to enable people that were not creatives or not filmmakers historically to be able to come and use this technology and bring their ideas to life and make it much easier to rapidly get to something that, you know, fulfills someone's internal vision. So I, um, I, I don't think that Hollywood is going to be disrupted by AI. I think entertainment is only going to grow because of AI. In the sense of just enabling more people to do 
more things or in other aspects. Enabling people to bring their ideas to life more quickly, enabling people to get to production more quickly, you know, it being able to actually bring new people and make new, like a whole nother generation of storytellers. I think that's really the promise of the technology. Do you see uh, just a, a future of like either more streamlined or more integration? Because I'm thinking of kind of watching the process of like making an AI, it's a short film or anything where it's like a lot of, I need to generate this image and then sort yeah. of generate this video, but then I need this character to talk. So I'm sort of using Hydra to like make them talk, but I got to like fit it back in to the process. So like kind of a lot of piecemealing stuff together yeah I'm kind of see like how does that future play out of like more cohesion or uh, streamline I would say that's top of mind for us so if you already notice if you use the Hedra platform you can access all of the best image video and audio generation models in one place and that's like that vision of having this like one-stop shop at least for our target in our target customer so that they don't have to like subscribe to multiple platforms that they can always trust that we are going to curate the best of AI for people is really how I see us pushing that forward um, as well as thinking about like fundamentally new ways of interacting with the models. I think co-creating with AI, where the AI is able to discern what your intentionality is better before it does the expensive generation, I think is like crucial for being able to allow more people so we don't have to have these like, you know, I think one of the productions that was done with us, Karen, took like three months of iteration. Yeah. Uh, how do you, what were some of the ideas of like different ways of interacting with uh, the AI models? I think prompting from just language alone is it's underspecified, right? Like, I think there are ways that I want to like mark up content, if you like, almost like some of the early motion brush approaches. So I think it's going to be like a, com a combination of like image prompting. Like, I really like the vibe of this with motion prompting. Like, I want this character to go here. And then being able to ground that unified in some language and some question and answering, like almost like you can talk back and forth with the system until it's sure it understands what you want. I think that's at least the first step of how we get to it, at least until we all have like brain chips or something. And uh, you can think it or something. You can just think it. <laughs> what about like, um, you know, human driving performance or as something yeah. similar to like an act one kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, people always ask us, like, could we do, like, a human-driven model? And we we can, of course. And we actually built, like, an internal prototype that was really exciting. I think the problem that I have is that, you know, when I think about our target market of, like, expanding, like, people who have historically not been able to create this content, a lot of those people, like, are not naturally trained actors. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's actually really hard to be a good actor. And I think that in some ways is a lot of the bottleneck for this content is that like, if you're one person, like some people like speaking of neural biz is really great at performance. So I think that there's definitely a, a role for that in terms of controllability. But historically, we've thought more about like, how can we make this just easier and faster? And having to record a driving video of yourself is usually like a huge bottleneck to speed. Yeah, and I guess depending on how good of a performer yeah, you are. Yeah. Like if I was doing it, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not writing Shakespeare. You know? What else is on kind of the roadmap or the, you know, radar for the next year or so? Yeah, I mean, so we just raised our Series A. So we're really excited to have a lot more capital to be more ambitious in terms of the technology that we're bringing to market. And I think like now that we've seen this new generation of models from like Google, for example, with VO3, I think they've really like raised the bar in terms of like what you can do with generative video. And so we're really excited about like what's next. So how can we make these models like faster and more interactive? How can we make them like understand your intentionality better? Can we do ways of like, you know, recreating video where you have much more targeted controllability and editability within the actual video itself rather than having to regenerate? Yeah. Um, we think there's a lot of like net new functionality we like to focus on as we integrate these like third party models like VO3 into our platform. How are you thinking about sort of the flip side, the dark side of it's very easy to take an image of someone like the baby and yeah. it could maybe talk, but taking images or likenesses of real people and then kind of seeing the, you know, like TikTok clips of an influencer yeah. marketing a product, but that they have no idea that they're marketing the product. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. And I think um, one of the advantages we've had as sort of one of the first people to bring this technology to market is that like we get the majority of the market share and then we also kind of get the right to make some like judgment calls. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that I've done since the beginning is we've always had a celebrity built filter. We've always done moderation against like nudity, extreme violence, extreme profanity, hate speech. That's been built into the Heater platform from day one. And I'm really glad that like we were able to take that market share before someone who like didn't do that did because you won't find 
content like that created with Hydra. Mm -hmm. um, or if you do, you should send it to me so we can improve, mm -hmm. work to improve our filters. But I, I've been like very proud of the distribution of people, con uh, con um, distribution of content people have created with us. Mm -hmm. I do think though, as these open source models come out, like open source models will always follow the leading edge models. Yeah. And they're going to come out without filters. And I think that puts a lot of responsibility and burden on the platforms to implement better moderation systems. Because even though I'm not going to facilitate the creation of that content, eventually someone will. And I think that's a problem that we as a society have to solve. Yeah, some sort of like content ID system like YouTube has with music, but for likenesses. Yeah, so there's um, a really interesting like law that's coming into effect next year, the AI Transparency Act, which actually mandates that AI generated content provide a synthetic ID associated with it and a way to check that on site. So we're obviously going to comply with this, which we've already taken steps to do so. I think this is really important, but I also think like Ultimately, the platforms are going to need to implement some type of moderation. Otherwise, we're, we are going to start seeing like political deep fakes on the regular. Right now, it's funny, right? Like you see these like JD Vance memes, for example. Right. Or like the rap videos. Or the rap with the, videos. Yeah. yeah, like, and it seems really fun and harmless. But at the same time, there is like the, the like, as you said, the dark side of that. When it is abused, um, that can be very dangerous. Would that apply or to the open source models or... I, I not apply, but like, it, there's, there's yeah. no way to, is there any way to enforce that if, if you're doing this yourself, like I on your own systems? It's very difficult, right? We could build that into the core model. Like we could actually build models that would refuse to do that. But at the same time, when something's open source, it allows for people to do their own fine tuning. So I think there is a scenario in which this actually like hinders the release of open source models, at least by, you know, American funded companies. Because if you do release that model and it's used for abuse, like there's a possibility that will come back to the company. Of course, like China is putting out a lot of these models as well. So, but a lot of Chinese businesses do operations in the US. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're hanging towards a future where we see less open source models in the space over time, especially as some of these more strict regulations come into place. But I do think, you know, it's inevitable that someone is going to continue to release something. Yeah. And yeah, I feel like what you said before, this on the um, content platform side, something to detect or verify that it's legit 100 percent when it's real people. I do think people are developing a little bit of a natural inoculation so far, like I have thought of that, but I've also seen some really awful sounding voices and people like convinced that it was like them or something. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think definitely like the newer generations, like yeah. a lot of times they'll see something and they'll be like, oh, that's AI. Yeah. Right. And that's good. Um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that we can't be less vigilant. We're here at AI on the lot. What have you seen? What's been interesting? What have your uh, impressions been of the event? I mean, I think it's incredible to just see how many people are really excited about AI media. Um, like I was in my PhD when this whole thing first started. And I think the amount and backgrounds and diversity of people that are coming is like so exciting because you have everyone from like studio executives to people who like literally just signed up for a tool like a couple weeks ago and made their first piece <laughs> of content. So I think starting to see like this mainstream crossover appeal now of um, creating with AI is really exciting and bodes well, I think, for the market. I've also met like so many incredible founders that are building really interesting stuff things in the space, like Eric from Topaz, um, like all of the, you know, I think Moon Valley is doing some very interesting things, especially with Asteria, mm -hmm. um, like doing their own, trying to build their own content studio. Yeah. So I think it's a really exciting time to be a company in the space. Are you finding more of the reaction this year of like less of the AI skepticism and more of just the like, what, what like curiosity yeah i think now people aren't skeptical that the technology is going to get there mm -hmm. right like when it first started and people were looking at two second barely moving clips they're like yeah. that's never gonna <laughs> no. let's let's worry about that in 10 years and now it's like maybe a year and a half later and like oh okay <laughs> i do still feel like there's a question of like what do we do with this mm -hmm. um across many people like a lot of it is still i i think we haven't entered the production era quite yet yeah. And more in terms of like what's been what's been produced thus far. I think we're like in the middle of that transition, which is a really exciting time. It kind of it's kind of like when we first had LLMs. Now it's like used ubiquitously in like customer service and coding. Um I think we're just now getting to that with video. And so like I've been spending a lot of time talking to like leaders in various companies who are looking how do we incorporate generative video in our like marketing strategy? What's to say the tech? What are the workflows? And I think that's like now more the conversation rather than like, is it going to get there? And is that sort of the kind of field that like you're entering of like personalized generation, like at scale, like 
customized talking videos? Yeah, I mean, I would say like we've moved beyond just talking now. We're really focused on like how do we build a workflow around generative media across all modalities where it's not so much that you're coming to Hedra for like a particular model, but you're coming to Hedra because you're, you want to produce a certain type of content. And for me, that's like how do we communicate information effectively at scale, whether or not it's like a marketing video or whether or not it's like creating a faceless TikTok channel. Um, we really just want to be the destination where people can trust that we're always going to provide the best solution. Cool. Where can people find out more about you and Hedra? You can go on hedra.com uh, and try us out. Uh, I mean, you can also email me at michael at hedra.com if you have some really exciting ideas. And we're hiring. So uh, you should come join us. Nice. Cool. Thanks so much, Michael. Thanks for having me.